Hi everyone, I'm JJ McGrath with, uh, I own a list called TechWave. Um, started uh, spring of 2013 and, and just uh, about in Grayson County, which is about 60 miles north of Dallas, right before you go to Oklahoma. So that's where I'm at. Uh, currently over a thousand subs, offering speeds up to 25 meg uh, down. We do some, but we mostly focus on uh, residential, about 90% residential. Um, kind of like what uh, um, uh, Matt was saying, um, you know, we were using um, our previous traffic shaper uh, was a, a DPI application, so we were in a transition of we're about to hit the capacity of it, so we need to start looking. But I didn't want to renew and didn't want to go up to that next tier um, to get ridiculous. I was actually started talking to uh, another Wisp. Uh, his name was Joe with Evergent, and you say, "Hey, you need may want to check out this." I think it was about two years ago, Garrett, or something like that. It's about yeah, it's about two years. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, about four Wisp uh, Palooza a couple years ago. So been working with them, uh, like I said, um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, he is right because when I was seeing the reports from Persine saying, "I don't understand this latency. I don't understand why your numbers are so different than ICMPM, ICMP." It was a it was an interesting learning curve trying to figure out what is QoE monitoring. Because if you actually look at the other DPI programs out there on the market, they can do QoE monitoring. It's like in the column on the right side, all the way over there. So they don't really show it. They're mostly focusing on deep <coughs> inspection. So really, um, 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 started working with Garrett and, and Dan and Arnie, and they're really great guys, and they really do a good job, and I've really enjoyed the journey we've been on. So kind of like what Matt does, we have a hodgepodge of Cambium, Cam, uh, Ubiquity, mostly is what we have, Buy, Sales, LTE, Redwind. Uh, that's what we mostly use. Um, I don't do Mimosa. Um, or some of the other stuff, but that's basically what I do. We use Sonar for our billing platform. Um, for our monitoring stuff, we do have Libre. Uh, we do actually run two instances of it, one for infrastructure and one for clients. So I also use the do, but that's mostly just to show me traffic of what's going on with our network. Uh, I use a program called Imco Ping Monitor for up and down devices and smoke ping, and I use ping them for my outside end to alert me if my outside uh, interfaces go offline. Um, so yeah, I started off with PowerCode was actually my previous billing system. Uh, and I used their, their, their BMU, then I switched to PowerCode and Procera, and you know, there's all that you can read. Um, so what does Proceme really does for us? Well, it, like I said, it does our QoE monitoring, also does our rate shaping, and we are still working on AP shaping. I don't think it's across our entire network just yet, right? So that's just so on a couple. Have it on yeah. yeah, there you go. Is that a standard feature for y'all now, or is that? Yeah. yeah, perfect. But it is great uh, working with them. Um, uh, some, I think of all of my vendors I've dealt with over the years, it seems probably about top notch when customer service. So the guys are always super responsive, always. I mean, I was sitting there talking to Garrett the other day, 11 o'clock, just texting back and forth. So, it, you know, I don't see the other vendors doing that. So. Um, just to give you briefly, this is what my, uh, uh, my um, not looks like so the, the stuff comes in the my links come in over here then goes through my access control routers and then my uh, goes from the one main access one router through per scene up to the firewall router up to the edge and out to the internet from there so like Matt does I also said I also have a if something happens with per scene even though they have a built-in bypass system we actually physically hardwire the bypass so it's easy so if Dan needs to do some system maintenance I just tell the micro tick hey, reroute over here, I actually shut down the OSPF interface and it reroutes. Like Matt says, I agree with them, uh, all hell goes loose because then it's open, you know, wild, wild west on the speeds on the internet, but generally it's just down for about 10, 15 minutes and then we do our maintenance and switch back over. And I think maybe have a one packet loss. But. Uh, and then this is just how it shows you in the dude of where my Prosim appliance is and how everything is in my NOC. Um, I guess logically, logical diagram. So, um, we've already kind of talked about this. Uh, great, you know, great experience. And uh, we do have um, this is a Prosim appliance. I think we started uh, with a Dell Power Edge 2950, an old model. So you can, you don't have to do anything super, super fancy, guys. Um, I am on a 10 gig appliance, so it's working out very well. Uh, I think you can 
a couple hundred meg is what I started out on, and uh, then I was for the longest time was just doing the one gig. So the, that Dell Power Edge, I think, was four percent CPU when we were running. I think a near gig, if we can try to remember those stats. So it's not a lot of overhead. It's just a layer two bridge. So it's not very demanding on the equipment at all. Um, so kind of like what Matt was talking about, some of the things that we were thinking about was that we realized we thought we had enough backhaul capacity. We turned out we didn't have enough. Uh, we were also having a lot of, uh, when the APs were going red, we were having a lot of um, uh, finding out that we were conflicting with ourselves on the frequencies. What it, it looked on paper was okay, but come to find out, we were having problems with towers three or four or five miles away. We didn't think it was a problem. Turned out, yes, no, it's a problem. We found a lot of problems with uh, interference on the client side. And I have an example over here of what's going on. Um, and, and what I really, really do enjoy now with Proceeding is whether we're delivering a good quality experience to our clients. You can't really tell that through ICMP. We can see that with our Proceeding now. Um, so, and you can see it through this, uh, our sector latencies. And the more green I have over here in this bar graph, I know that it's getting better and we were, and as we're doing system upgrades, you can tell us we're narrowing that gap and improving our green overall. It's still a roller coaster ride sometimes if there's a new interferer in the area or as I'd more, we suddenly have uh, uh, technical problems with backhauls or we're just backhauls are running out of capacity as we just uh, add more clients. Uh, this one was an example of, um, you can see that during <laughs> peak hours, we were hitting, this one user was having a lot more problems. This is that blue that you see peeking out a whole lot. Come to find out the sector, this person ended up being on the wrong sector. For some odd reason, they were on the Northwest instead of the Southwest. So once we <laughs> moved, I don't know what this particular one was, but what happened here was basically, once we moved them off that sector, their stats went down. I think we, no, I didn't show the after fact of it. Um, but this was an interesting thing was you can <coughs> see it's kind of crazy it takes a little while to understand some of these graphs but it's great that you can see hey what is this one specific user doing um, so in this case it's identifier sector ID 964 because I'm in sonar it was the sonar's tag so what I do is I go say well who's 964 and then look it up and I can start drilling down so it's great to where I can help troubleshoot uh, find out problems um, this is where we were, Dan and I were experimenting with sector shaping. So you can see where here at the top graph latency, RTT latency was hitting at near 200 milliseconds. Once we started applying uh, sector shaping, we're now hovering around 100 milliseconds. RTT latency, and that's not ICMP latency. So we, by enabling AP shaping, it's really made a huge difference in latency. Um, yeah, and then once we, and this is an after fact of shaping that sector down, all the, the you can see the, st the stats are coming down and getting better. We still have this one subscriber, this blue. Now this is subscriber number 3064. Something weird is going on over there. Hey, what's going on? So it's an exception. Well, we're gonna drill down to 30, whatever it is, 3064. 30, 30, if you actually pull out the stats of this person, um, Miss Glass, a blast over here. Everything looks okay. Capacities look fine. Not a problem. Uh, it, you know, on the scheme of things, everything looks great. Well, because I have a managed router on site, I was able to log in. They're currently on. Uh, I know it's an air router, guys, so you know, we don't use these anymore. But they're on channel eight. On thing. Well, when you do a spectrum scan, I realized that they have an extender on channel eight. Their office jet was on channel eight. So I realized that there was client side problems that was contributing to this peak right here. I could see in there, once I was able to drill down, I could see we have client problems. Uh, so, and we actually ended up having, I think, went on site, replaced uh, to upgrade them to a Microtech, and we fixed some wireless problems with them. The customer is way happier now. And they didn't even know that there was a problem. They said everything's great. And we're like, well, no, we see a problem. Let's fix it for you. Uh, what I'm going to show you here real quick is just how um, Perseem and Sonar integration works. I think it's one of probably the smoothest integrations out there. 
So I like it where I can actually go into the client inside of the sonar itself uh, and see that sonar says everything is good here. So most billing systems will tell you whether you're good or not. This is an indicated by ICMP and SNMP. But what I like about here is where I can see where the parent sector is. So sonar says it's good, but Prasim actually shows, hey, you have a problem, it's yellow. So I like that integration where you see problems by the customer service rep looking through there is like, yeah, everything's good. Oh, hey, no, it looks like the, the towers may have a problem. Let's look into that and see what's going on. Uh, and then I can look through the actual network site itself inside of Sonar you know, where I define all my access points and I can say, well, that one's good. And then the Prasim is good. Uh, but the Prasim is bad and Prasim, of course, is a warning status. So I can see where there are problems at. So not only on the client side, but actually inside the network site inside Sonar itself. I really like that integration. It helps us a lot, it helps us identify where the problems are. Uh, so some of our benefits are, you know, I, again, it's that I know that I'm delivering a good quality service. Uh, and it's, you know, we still see problems to this day. We're not perfect, it's helped us grow. But I do know that it really helps drive intelligent decisions on where we need to be uh, focusing our upgrades and equipment change outs and where we should be concentrating our efforts in our network. Um, I do want to reiterate, even when I was talking to Garrett last night about this, and uh, people and then an operator came up and started talking to us and he's still confused. Perseem is not a DPI solution. People are like, well, how do you compare against Sacy or Prisera? Okay, it's, it's an apples and oranges kind of comparisons. Yes, the DPIs can track and monitor QoE, but they do not do it like how Sonar does, uh, Prasim does. It's a completely different package. Um, so we just make sure that, that, that it's, there is a huge distinct, uh, there's a distinction there. Um, and you certainly, you can't, you can't fix what you don't measure. And this helps us measures and gives us, and shows us our where we are good and where we need to vastly be.